When he died on June 21st, 1940, just one month shy of his 59th birthday, he was the most decorated U.S. Marine in history. He was called the Fighting Quaker and Maverick Marine, but thousands of Marines called him Old Gimlet Eye. He had received 16 military medals, including five for valor. He was the only Marine to be awarded both the Marine Corps Brevet Medal and two Medals of Honor, all for separate actions. This is the story of Smedley Butler. Let's dig into this. Smedley Darlington Butler was born July 30, 1881 to Quaker parents in Westchester, Pennsylvania. He quit school just before his 17th birthday to enlist in the Marine Corps during the Spanish-American War. His 33-year career in the Marines would span the Spanish-American War, the Philippine-American War, the Boxer Rebellion, the so-called Banana Wars, the Mexican Revolution, and World War I. In 1898, after lying about his age, Butler was commissioned as second lieutenant and assigned to the USS New York, where he served until being discharged in 1899 for reasons unknown. Later that same year, he was commissioned as a first lieutenant and sent to the Philippines. He was thrown into combat and his first leadership role after his commanding officer was injured. He led his troop in a fierce battle and took the town of Novaleta, with only one Marine killed and ten injured, but fifty men were incapacitated by the heat and humidity of tropical combat. Butler was then sent to China to participate in the Boxer Rebellion. On July 13, 1900, he was part of the Battle of Tianjin, where he crawled from a trench to rescue a fellow Marine. He was shot in the leg and pinned down until a fellow officer came to his aid. Together, they pulled the wounded Marine back to the trench. At the time, commissioned officers were not eligible for the Medal of Honor, but Butler's commanding officer commended his actions, and he was promoted to captain. In 1921, he would be awarded the Marine Corps Brevet Medal for his actions that day. Next came the so-called Banana Wars. The U.S. military was protecting the banana, tobacco, and sugarcane interests of U.S. companies in the Caribbean, Central and South America, as well as government control of the Panama Canal. It was during this time that Butler, serving in Honduras, earned the nickname Old Gimlet Eye. The term refers to someone who sees everything or has piercing eyes. Butler's eyes were constantly bloodshot and red from contracting a tropical fever. After Honduras, Butler was assigned to the Philippines. The isolated outpost he was assigned to ran out of rations, and Butler tried a dangerous resupply mission across a stormy bay to obtain anything he could feed his men. Then, in 1908, he had a nervous breakdown. He spent nine months on sick leave at his home in Philadelphia. From 1909 until November of 1912, Butler served in Nicaragua. He was then sent to Panama. In January 1914, a revolution was brewing near Veracruz, Mexico. Butler was sent in as a spy to assess the situation and form a detailed plan of invasion. He posed as a railroad official and was able to obtain information on the Mexican military. The situation exploded when it was discovered that a shipment of arms was headed to the area. On April 21st, 1914, President Wilson ordered the landing force of Marines and sailors to intercept the shipment and secure the city. Until their arrival, Major Butler led his troops in combat in Veracruz. The street-to-street -street fighting was intense as troops searched for revolutionary resistance fighters door-to-door. -door. For his distinguished conduct in battle, on April 22, 1914, Major Butler was awarded his first Medal of Honor. Then in 1915, after the president of Haiti was assassinated, Butler was sent to lead Marines in stamping out an unorganized but effective movement of gangs called the Cacao Bandits, intent on creating chaos in the country. On October 24, 1915, his patrol of 44 mounted Marines was ambushed and surrounded 
by several hundred revolutionaries. The next day, they charged the bandits from three directions at once on horseback. The bandits ran, and Butler's troops were free. Then in November, Butler and a force of 700 Marines began clearing forts in the mountains occupied by the bandits. Clearing the final occupied fort and possible escape route for the bandits included fierce hand-to-hand -hand combat. Butler was awarded his second Medal of Honor by President Wilson for extraordinary heroism exhibited in Haiti. Butler would go on to command troops in France during World War I, be the commanding general of the Marine Barracks at Quantico, Virginia, and while on a leave of absence, serve as Director of Public Safety for Philadelphia. Returning from leave, he was commander of the U.S. Marine Corps Base at San Diego, California, and commanded the 3rd Brigade in China before returning to Quantico in January of 1929. In 1931, Butler gave a speech that would change his career and his life. He publicly called Italy a, quote, mad dog nation, end quote. He said dictator Benito Mussolini had run over and killed a small child in a road, then showed no remorse, even telling others in the car to never look back in life. President Herbert Hoover wanted Butler court-martialed after the speech for creating an international incident. It wouldn't happen. Unfortunately, the story was true. Butler retired a short time later at the rank of Major General. Butler introduced the unofficial mascot of the Marine Corps, a bulldog named King Bulwark. Later, his name was changed to Jiggs. Butler enlisted the bulldog into the Marine Corps during a formal ceremony in October of 1922. His enlistment papers included his official orders to sit, stay, and lie down. The mascot tradition continues to this day. After his long career in the military, Butler became disillusioned with the business of war and wrote and lectured about anti-war beliefs. Writing a short book titled War is a Racket, he called war a business run by governments interested in placing people unfavorable to their own policies in control of other countries. It's an argument that is still used by many today. He advocated for peace talks and cooperation, but always fully supported the military and believed in the defense of the United States. His book is still in print. He ran unsuccessfully for the U.S. Senate in 1932, losing in the primary. He also testified before the House Un-American Activities Committee in 1934 regarding a plot against the U.S. government. After retiring, he had moved to Newton Square, Pennsylvania with his wife. He entered the Naval Hospital in Philadelphia after feeling ill for a few weeks and died there on June 21, 1940. General Smedley Butler may be one of the most recognizable Marines of all time. The 16 medals he received during his 33-year career attest to his heroism and leadership and make him the most decorated Marine in U.S. history when he died. He has been honored for his role in War and Peace. The USS Butler and Camp Smedley Butler Marine Corps Base in Okinawa, Japan are named for Major General Smedley Butler. And the Boston Chapter of Veterans for Peace is called the Smedley Butler Brigade in his honor. Thanks for watching. Hey, here's another Dragon Den video you might like. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. And you can hit the notification bell if you'd like to know when our videos come out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.